Well, greetings, church. Pastor John Hoosen here. Trust that you're ready and able to be discipled by the living word of God. The church, I really am um, excited about this word. I, I believe it's, uh, it really is a word that we need to receive in, in today's current situation and the trials and the tribulations and, and the issues that we face. And, and that is, church, that, uh, that we must not lose focus. So I'd like for you to turn to the book of Mark. The book of Mark, and we'll begin Mark 13, chapter 13, Mark chapter 13, and we'll begin at verse 32. Mark 13 and verse 32. As per usual, you can pause this recording. Because after we have prayed, I'll go straight into the word. Right, shall we pray? Father God, we do thank you, Lord, and we pray, Father, your great challenge in our lives. Father, we realize, Lord, how much we need Jesus and how much we need to focus on Jesus and how much we need to realize what your word speaks on, Father God. And so, Lord, we do pray, Father, today that you'll just guide and lead us with regard to this truth, Lord. Father, may I dig deep into our hearts and our souls and our minds, Father. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And so, church, what I want to talk to us about today is, is just, are you... Can you and do you know how to watch? How to watch? Uh, because uh, we, we had a men's meeting recently and, and there was a wonderful uh, our, our men's leader taught us uh, a wonderful from this piece of scripture and it was really talking about, about watching and we spoke about being watchmen etc etc but let's, let's read this piece of scripture and let's see what is God saying to, to all of us, to his church? And in, in my Bible, this is entitled in the New King James, an exhortation to watch. So it's really saying, watch. I want to call you to watch. You can also look to Matthew 24, verses 36 to 51, or Luke chapter 21, I think it starts about 34, yes, 34 through to 36, it says, yeah, that's right. All right, so Mark, Mark 13, verse 32. This is Jesus speaking. But on that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Verse 33, take heed, watch and pray. Watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It's like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning. Lest, coming suddenly, he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. Father, we bless you for your word and the reading of your word. And we pray that it would challenge the living heck out of us, Father. Now, church, when I look in the Greek, when I look at the Greek word for, for this watch, it means to stay awake, to be awake. Excuse me, to be awake, to be alive, to be alert. Church, have you been alert? What do, what do you mean, Pastor? What do you mean being alert? Well, have you been alert to the things of Jesus? Because first and foremost, we so many people are just talking about this is end times, etc. It may well be. But it's very clear in the verse uh, preceding as we started on 32. But on that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Only the Father knows when Jesus would will return. However, he then goes further, the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, take heed. So listen up here. Watch and pray. Be alert. Be awake. Pray, church. For he says, you do not know when the time is. Church, the honest truth of this fact, this matter is, we do not know. Man does not know. We have had very, very bright theologians uh, that can all come down with all these wonderful facts and etc, etc. But all of them are wrong. The word, why do I know that? Because the word of God is clear. Jesus has said it. And because Jesus has said it, I believe it. No one knows. Not even Jesus knows. Nor the Son. 
But on that day, of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So church, instead of being so focused on all the other things of the world, here we have this wonderful plea for watchfulness. And, you know, it, it amazes me that as we, as we break into this, into this, Jesus says, take heed. Take heed. And uh, this is actually the fourth time in this chapter that Jesus mentions this. He talks about, uh, about this in, in verse 5, and then in verse 9, and then in verse 23. Verse 23 he says, but take heed. See, I've told you all these things beforehand. And so, so Jesus, he's just, this time though, he does one thing that's a little bit different. He adds, watch and pray. Why? Because we don't know the time. And so, because this hour of Christ's return is uncertain for us believers, for us Christ followers, we must be watching, we must be ready at every given moment. And when I look at verse 34, it sort of gives us a hint of, of Matthew's parable of the talents, doesn't it? And what happened with us talents, church? The first was given five talents, and uh, to another one who was given um, two, and another one one to his own ability, and then when the master returned, the five had made five, and the two had made two, and the one had buried it. He had not been watchful at all. And was, was the master happy, church? Church, we must be very careful. Church of Jesus Christ, we must be very careful that we do not lose focus on Jesus. That we do not lose focus on Jesus. We have been told to take heed, to watch and to pray. Take note, not complain and deny, but to watch and to pray, for you do not know when the time is. And then uh, verse 37, and what I say to you, I say to all, he finishes with this wonderful challenge, Jesus Christ, in this piece of scripture. And he says this, and so church, i close with this. The same words that Jesus left, let my Jesus' words just fall deeply on your heart. And Jesus says this, and what I say to you, I say to all. Jesus says this church, to his church, watch.